Hello, I'm Ron Vale, and we're going to discuss how to focus the microscope on your specimen. And we're going to go through a number of tips, but with practice, many of these steps will become second nature to you. But whenever you're focusing the microscope, it's always important to do it with uh, a great deal of care because one's working with an objective that can be quite expensive, uh, often costing as much as $10,000. So um, the first thing you want to do is to become familiar with the focusing knobs of your particular microscope. In this microscope, on the right side is a fine focusing um, knob with a remote uh, focusing device. So that allows us to fine tune um, the level of, of focus. And on the left side is a coarse focusing knob. Now, before I even put the sample on, I want to get used to these focusing knobs, in particular knowing which direction I turn the knob, how that will um, uh, relate to whether the objective lens moves either up or down. And the direction of focus um, with regard to the motion of the objective lens can be different in different types of microscopes. So it's important to become familiar with this with your particular microscope. So in this case, I'm turning the focusing knob in both directions and I can see that when I, when I turn the focusing knob towards me the objective lens is rising um, up towards the specimen. So now when I become familiar with this uh, objective knob I now want to become uh, make sure that I, I have everything set up properly so that I can see the fluorescence from my specimen. So before you start focusing, you want to make sure that the light path of the microscope is set up correctly so that the image is being projected to the eyepiece. In this case, actually, the light pa path is going to the camera, and so I need to switch it to uh, the light path going to the eyepiece, and now I'm ready uh, to start focusing and looking for fluorescence. In this case, I'm using uh, a green fluorescent protein. Um, and when I open up the shutter, um, I can see that there's this bluish green light, which is the correct excitation for GFP. And I know also in advance that I have the correct emission, emission and excitation filters in here. Um, so I should be able to excite and view the fluorescence of the GFP. Um, next, we have to. Um, make sure we know what objective we're using, whether it's an air objective, a water objective, or an oil immersion objective. In this case, we have uh, an oil immersion objective. So I have to place a drop of oil between the um, objective lens and the cover slip. So uh, one drop of oil should be enough. Um, and I'm being careful not to uh, touch the objective lens directly. Uh, there we go. We have our oil droplet. Now we can put our specimen on, um, but one has to be very careful when one puts it on with the correct orientation. Uh, that being that the cover slip should be um, the side in contact with the oil and the objective. So I'll, I'm flipping it over on the correct side over here and uh, placing it on the stage. Now, before I start focusing with the eyepiece, I want to get the objective lens to approximately the correct uh, position. And I can do that with the coarse focusing knob. And um, what I'm looking for is the moment when the oil comes in contact with the uh, cover slip. And at that moment, as I am now focusing up here, I'm watching for uh, the moment when the the contact is made and the oil spreads on the cover slip surface. There, there it goes right there. Um, and now I know I'm at a good starting point to continue the rest of my focusing uh, by looking through the eyepiece. Now to do this next step, I am going to go to the eyepiece, but um, the fluorescence is fairly dim and this room is, is, is quite bright. And I'm going to, I would have a very difficult time seeing the dimmer fluorescence with all this background illumination from the room. 
So I'm going to turn off the lights now, and I'm going to become dark adapted with my eye, and then I can do the rest of the focusing on the specimen. Okay, so now I'm dark adapted. I'm ready to look through the eyepiece and continue focusing up uh, to the specimen and look for the GFP fluorescence. And everything looks fairly dim at this point. I can see maybe a little bit of green haze. And I'm turning the coarse focusing knob slowly while carefully looking through the eyepiece until I now begin to see fluorescence becoming brighter. Um, and I can see some kind of outlines of some green objects. And now I'm going to the uh, fine focusing device. So I can um, now bring the cells into crisp focus. And that's it. And now I'm ready to do uh, my experiment. So a few more focusing tips. In some cases, you may have an extremely dim fluorescent sample. For example, um, fluorescence coming from single molecules in which case it may be very difficult to see uh, the single molecule fluorescence with the eyepiece. And in that case, you may have to direct the light to a very sensitive camera and actually undergo the same kind of focusing routine, but now looking at the image from the camera to focus rather than the eyepiece. Finally, in some cases, uh, you may have a very difficult time um, focusing on your specimen. And you may think you've gone too far. If that's the case, it's good to stop at that moment and look at the specimen to see if you indeed have overfocused. You can see this happening right here when we've gone over focus. And um, now the cover, the objective lens is actually pushing up on the entire slide, lifting it up. Um, now, this can be potentially damaging to your objective lens, and there are a couple ways that you can protect against this. First of all, if you know you have a difficult sample um, to focus, you may not want to clamp it down rigidly onto the stage, but uh, keep it loose. So um, if, the, if you go over focus, it's, it's just lightly lifting um, the slide and cover slip. And, Second of all, another thing that helps protect these objective lenses is a uh, spring load that's built into the objective lens. So you can see this spring load here. Um, so if it pushes against something rather than uh, just pushing on the objective lens itself, uh, the spring load will go down. Um, but nevertheless, the best strategy is if you're concerned that you've gone over focus, just stop. Uh, have a look at where you are, and um, then uh, put your objective lens down and just start the process all over again to try to find focus. So let's now review all the steps in focusing the microscope. First, um, look at your focusing knobs. Know which one is the fine focus, which is the coarse focus. Also, get used to how um, the direction of turning these knobs relates uh, to the motion of the objective lens. Um, next step is uh, make sure that you have uh, everything about your light source uh, properly arranged, the correct um, dichroic filters for uh, the fluorescence from the object you want to view. Um, next, uh, look at your specimen. Make sure that you put the cover slip side down onto the objective. If you're using oil, you just need one drop of oil placed uh, on top of the objective lens, making sure not to touch it directly. Uh, then put your sample in place um, and look at the sample uh, and look for the moment when the oil just hits the cover slip surface, turn the right lights out of the room, make sure that the light path is directed to the eyepiece if you're using the eyepiece, um, and then sit down and carefully 
use the course knob uh, very, very slowly uh, to find uh, the approximate correct position, and then uh, use the fine focusing knob. And if there's any doubt, um, look at the objective, make sure it's not over focused, um, and you can always just put your objective back to a starting position and start the whole process again. And uh, again, just practice and um, uh, uh, focusing uh, a sample will become easy for you.